This Catch 120 kayak from Pelican is the latest kayak that I'll be rigging for fishing. However, I gotta say that right out of the factory, it really does come very well prepared. It has a very nice seat. It's perfectly stable, no reason for pontoons. It has rod holders built in. And of course, did I say it's stable? <laughs> this thing's a little bit like a barge. Well, for me at least. But I still wanted to add a few things, so I took it over to my big boat. You see my Bass Raider there, also from Pelican. And this kayak's not that heavy that I can't just lift it up onto the boat. That's kind of nice. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add an anchor trolley. This is just a store-bought one. And the process has begun, of course, <laughs> where I take a kayak and I make it my own. Customizing kayaks is a lot of fun. I actually have a whole bunch of uh, extra stickers like this, so you can look in the description if you're interested in finding out how you can get one. And in no time, this universal kayak trolley I bought online is installed. It even comes with a cleat that I just screwed onto the top. And this boat also comes with tracks that will accept like gearheads from Scotty. Here you see there's a, uh, what do they call that, a rocket launcher style? and a regular style rod holder. Scotty's got all kinds of things you can attach to these. So it's pretty much up to you as to how you want to rig it. So it was almost ready to go. But not quite. <laughs> well, you know me, you know that I can't be content just doing simple modifications like that to a kayak. I have to take it to the next level which is where this comes into play. This is a skeg and the assembly from an old kayak. It was a very, very small orange kayak. Um, I was trying to push the limits to see how small a kayak I could actually fish from. The whole project turned out to be a bit of a failure, but there are still some parts that I could use from it. So I'm gonna put this skeg on this kayak. But uh, first, let me show you some old footage from me trying to fish from a very small kayak, one that I named the Menehune. Menehune is the name of an ancient people that supposedly lived on Hawaii. They liked eating bananas. They were very small. <laughs> and it seemed appropriate to call this little tiny kayak the Menehune. I'm not that big of a guy, but I could still barely fit in it. But it didn't stop me, I added a skeg, Here you can see me fashioning it in the shape of a leaf, a banana leaf, which is supposed to be the Menehune people's favorite food. <laughs> Made that out of a piece of plexiglass. And I strapped everything that I thought I would need down to it. But I was exceeding the weight limit tremendously, so I glued some strips of foam to the sides of it. And then, I took it out to see if it would work. The kayak was barely supporting me, but it was still just enough to catch a fish. There was a few times where I thought if I had a bigger fish on, he might have uh, had the advantage and drug me all over the place. But I was able to get this fish in, just a little jack. But I wasn't terribly comfortable out here on the flats, so I thought I'd take this assembly and try a new experiment. Do fish wear earrings? No, 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 no. Do fish have good hearing? Huh? <laughs> Never mind. Since I knew that the kayak floated, I took it to some place a little more sheltered. Under the trains here, I thought, with all this racket, would fish actually still bite? Or would they get all frightened away? 
but it turned out for sure that the fish didn't care about the loud noises. I kind of knew this already. <laughs> At least what sheep said. It must be hard of hearing or something. <laughs> this was one of the last times that I ever really took this kayak out. It really was proving to be just not big enough for me. I guess that's why you've never seen videos of this thing in the past. Well, that's pretty cool stuff, huh? Well, uh, here now that I have a, an adult sized kayak, I'm going to try to put this on. And the first thing I have to do is cut off the handle because there's no room for this as is. This will become the handle too. So. Let's get to cutting. Although I said earlier that skegs don't pivot, what I meant is horizontally. Here you can see these pivot points just by adding male and female threaded PVC parts. That would allow me to raise and lower the skeg, but it still wouldn't turn left or right. This was meant just to improve tracking, not to steer the kayak. <laughs> Obviously, you've got to have some uh, courage to drill big holes in your kayak, but if you do, you can use the same male ends with a cap as a, a bolt and a nut to hold the assembly in place. Once the hole is drilled, you just insert the male end through, put the cap underneath, you tighten it all down, and now you have a place to add some PVC armatures. This whole assembly was going to double as a new handle to compensate for the one that I cut off. And then you can see I put it back together with a little silicone. I glue most of the PVC into it after everything is screwed down into the holes. And now it was time to add the skeg part, but I didn't know how long to make it or at what angle, so I had to take the whole thing out onto the water to figure it out. I do want to give a special thanks to McCain for sending me a few fishing rods. They work really great, and they also look pretty cool, too. After having caught that fish, you can see what I do there is I correct a little bit to straighten out the kayak. And then at, as soon as I cast it, I have to correct again. And then before I'm done retrieving, I have to correct yet again. This was the reason that I'm adding a skeg. With any kind of wind or current, a flat bottomed stable kayak tends to turn. Here you see if I don't correct, I'm now almost sideways to the wind or the current, I think, in this situation. Both will turn you around. Next thing you know, you're fishing backwards when I'm trying to face the trees, and this just wasn't going to work. Fortunately, I already had a solution. I had everything I needed with me to attach that skeg, but first I had to find a place to get up onto land. And although Tampa has a lot of great mangrove lines where you can fish, it's kind of short on the beach department. But I eventually found a little spot where I could pull the kayak up and do some work. It was actually a really nice picturesque place.
And the reason I didn't do this on the boat before I left is because you can't really tell what position the skeg has to be in because little tiny micro adjustments will make it so that you're either pointing in one direction or the other. If it was really crooked, you would just go around in circles. So I crammed it in there as best as I could, and I took it out for a test run. You can see it's up out of the water, and then I reach back and pivot it down inside the water. And right away I could tell I was listening to port just a little bit. I should say I was turning to port. So I came back, and I readjusted it. Again, this is an important part if you're going to build a skeg to get it dialed in so that you're going perfectly straight. Once I had it back out there, I was realizing that if I stopped paddling, the kayak would just keep going in a straight line. I knew I had it dialed in just right. So I took myself a little Sharpie marker and marked where everything had to be. Later on, I took it and I shortened it because I didn't want it so deep in the water, and I added a little cotter pin. I made this one out of an old fish stringer, <laughs> and that would keep it from falling out and from spinning while I was underway. But first, now to take it on a full test. Here you can see me coming along this tree line here. Ideally, I want to face forward so I can cast parallel to these trees. This is still sped up, but you can tell that I'm not correcting at all. I'm not even touching the paddle, and the kayak keeps going straight. It's really awesome. It makes fishing from a kayak so much nicer. That little skeg in the back really was doing its job. I, on the other hand, was having a lot of trouble finding fish. But you can see here, it's, it's just going to keep going whatever direction you have it pointed in. Little tiny adjustments is all you really need. I just couldn't catch any fish. <laughs> At this point though, it was time to head back and do the final cutting and aligning of the skeg assembly. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not surprised at the results I had with this skeg because I've put them on kayaks before and the results were always phenomenal. The increase in performance is amazing. It really is. Anybody out there who has a kayak without a skeg or a rudder, I would strongly suggest uh, giving this a shot. And I'm going to put some links in the description below to show some simpler ways people have figured out uh, to how to put skegs on a kayak. And if you're out there and you haven't bought a kayak yet, I would really suggest getting something very stable, like the Catch-120 here, that has enough capacity to uh, support you and your gear, unlike the, the little uh, orange one, which wasn't enough for me. Uh, so get a kayak that's the right size for you, because adding tracking is a piece of cake, but adding stability can be a little bit tricky. So um, this kayak is actually working out really great. Now that it's a uh, good tracking kayak, and it was already a good stable, perfectly stable kayak, it's now like a super kayak. So uh, leave a comment below if you want to uh, share your videos or your suggestions as to how to add a skeg on uh, a kayak and, I don't know, just uh, tell me that I'm, you know, cool or awesome or something like that. That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right. See you guys on the water. Bye.